So a typical METAR report contains the following information in sequential order. Now first we have the type of report. The first notation denotes that this is a METAR report. Next we have what's called the station identifier or airport identifier. It's a four letter code established by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. And in the 48 contiguous United States, a unique three letter identifier is given to an airport preceded by the letter K. Now in this example, we obviously see KJFK for JFK Airport in New York. Alaska and Hawaii have an additional identifier letter of P. So Hawaii would begin with the letters PH and Alaska with PA. Station identifiers can be found by searching various websites such as uh, NOAA's Aviation Weather Digital Data Services or even better 1-800-WX-BRIEF.COM. And incidentally, as of May 2018, the FAA discontinued the use of what was called the DUOT system and we just want to mention that in case you do see any reference to that on the internet, uh, that is no longer in use. So next we have the date and time of report. Now the first two digits are the current date. So the 1-6, the 16th would be the current date of that specific date in time. And it would be current. So whatever today would be for you, it would be that date. The last four digits are the time of the report, which will be given in Zulu time. And of course, Zulu time is synonymous with Greenwich Mean Time and Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. And pilots should practice converting Zulu time and adjusting for daylight savings time um, if applicable. We will be using Zulu time a lot. So in this example, we have 16th day, 2251 Zulu. Next, we have wind reporting, which is typically reported with five digits, followed by the KT indicating knots, unless wind gusts are involved. So the first three digits indicate the direction the true wind is blowing from in tens of degrees. So in this example, the wind is blowing from 160 degrees, which is a little bit south-southwest. If the wind direction is variable, the report would show VRB squeezed in there. So it would be 160 VRB and then followed by the wind speed, seven knots. Now I want to again reiterate, it shows you the true wind direction in 160 and not magnetic direction. So the last two digits again indicate the speed of the wind in knots. And in this example, the wind is blowing at seven knots. And again, if the winds are gusting, a letter G would be noted, followed by the wind speed. So it would be 16007G18KT. Now, although it appears these alphanumeric characters are transposed, they are not. So I, we highlighted it here to further define for you. You can see wind 160 degrees. That's where the wind is blowing from 160 degrees and then seven knots and then the gusting is squeezed in between. And also if the wind direction varies from more than 60 degrees and the wind speed is greater than six knots, a separate group of numbers separated by a V would indicate the extremes of the wind directions. You may or may not see that uh, on the exam, but we just point that out again as you will have a lot of this information for you to print out and download and refer to at the end of these lessons. Next, we have what is called the modifier. Now the modifier denotes that the METAR report came from an automated source. Now, if the notation auto is not listed in the report, then the report came from a human. It was generated by a person. Sometimes you may see the modifier COR in place of auto. And when that occurs, it identifies the report was corrected and was sent out to replace an earlier report that may be contained an error. So an example, it would be METAR KJFK. You'd have the time and the date and then COR squeezed in between the date and the time and 10, what is the 10 statute miles. 
A modifier is not always present also, and sometimes it can be placed under the remark section, which is located at the far right end of this METAR report. And A01 would indicate no precipitation discriminator, or A02 would be with precipitation discriminator. Now those indicate the type of precipitation sensors employed at the automated station. And next we have visibility. Now the prevailing visibility reported here is in uh, 10 statute miles as denoted with the letters SM. Now it's reported uh, in both miles and fractions of miles and sometimes the runway visual range, which would be indicated as RVR, would be noted following the prevailing visibility. So this 10 SM could actually be 10 and a half statute miles. Now RVR is the distance a pilot can see down a runway in a moving aircraft. And when RVR is reported, it'll be shown with an R, then the runway number followed by a slant, forward slash, and then the visual range in feet. So example, if an RVR is reported as R runway 17 left 1400 feet, that translates to a visual range of 1400 feet on runway 17 left. Now next we have weather. And weather can be broken down into two different categories, qualifiers and weather phenomenon. Now first the qualifiers of intensity, proximity, and the descriptor of the weather are given. The intensity may be light, which would be indicated by a minus sign, or moderate, which would be indicated by nothing, or heavy, which would be indicated by a plus sign. Proximity only depicts weather phenomenon that are in the airport vicinity. Now not shown in this example, the notation VC would indicate a specific weather phenomenon is in the vicinity VC for vicinity of five to 10 miles from the airport. Descriptors are used to describe certain types of precipitation and obscurations. Now in the report of the sky and weather conditions, they're always reported in sequence of amount, height, and type of indefinite ceiling height or vertical visibility. Now in this example, we see few clouds at 5,500 feet, scattered at 19,000 feet and broken clouds at 26,000 feet. All of that pertains to the weather. Clouds above 12,000 feet are typically not detected or reported by an automated station and the types of clouds specifically towering cumulus which would be shown as TCU or cumulonimbus clouds as uh, CB are reported with their height and contractions are often used to describe the amount of cloud coverage and obscuring phenomena. The amount of sky coverage is reported in eighths of the sky from horizon to horizon. So next we have the temperature and dew point. The air temperature and dew point are always given in Celsius degrees. Temperatures below zero Celsius are preceded by the letter M to indicate a minus. And so in this example, we have 26 degrees Celsius, dew point 13 degrees. Next, we have the altimeter setting as reported in inches of mercury in a four digit number group. So here we have 29.82 inches of mercury. Now, rising or falling pressure may also be denoted in the remarks section, such as pressure rising, P-R-E-S-R-R, -R, or pressure falling, P-R-E-S-F-R. -E and then lastly, we have the remarks section, which always begins with the letters R-M-K, short for remarks, and comments may or may not appear in this section of the METAR. Now the information that's contained in this section may include wind data, variable visibility, beginning and ending times of a particular phenomenon, pressure information, other various information is deemed necessary. Now in this example, the RA and then B25 following remarks equates to rain began at 25 minutes past the hour. 
Now, in relation to the reporting time shown, remember over to the left after the 16th day, 2251 Zulu. And this example, this would also mean that rain began at 2225 Zulu. So let's just further explain and review the METAR report in its entirety from left to right. And this will basically be how it's read. Routine METAR for JFK, 16th day of the month, 2251 Zulu, automated source. Wind 160 degrees at 07 knots, visibility 10 statute miles. Few clouds at 5,500 feet, scattered clouds 19,000 feet, ceiling broken or broken clouds at 26,000 feet, temperature 26 degrees Celsius, dew point 13 degrees Celsius, barometric pressure 29.82 inches of mercury, Rain began at 25 minutes past the hour. So here we will review the METAR report again. And this graph, once you see it all completed, um, will be available for you to print out and refer to. We feel this is a pretty handy graph to help you grasp how to define and read a METAR report. So again, first we have the station identifier which identifies the airport. And again, K signifies airport in the contiguous lower 48 United States. JFK is the airport. Next, we have the date and time of report, 16th day at 22.51 Zulu time, Greenwich Mean Time. And that would equate for me at 6.51 p.m. Eastern time, regular time. Wind direction and velocity, wind from 160 degrees at seven knots, basically saying it's blowing from the southeast. We have the modifier that tells us the report came from an automated source. Next, we have the visibility, 10 statute miles. And, and it could be additional information in here. For example, it could have rain and haze also indicated in there. And then next, these three groups of alphanumeric characters tell us the sky conditions. Few clouds at 5,500, scattered at 19,000, broken at 26,000. And next we have the temperature and dew point, 26 degrees Celsius, dew point 13 degrees. Altimeter setting, inches of mercury, 29.82. And then again, we have our remarks.